Everyone on base, until instructions are given, do not make a sound. Stop all construction work. I repeat, do not make a sound. This is not a drill. The late 90s were a golden era for survival horror, with iconic franchises like Resident Evil and Silent Hill making waves across the PlayStation. However, Sega's Saturn didn't fare quite as well in the genre, particularly outside of Japan. One of its last major titles, Deep Fear, released in 1998, attempted to bring the thrills and chills of survival horror to the console. Today, I'm diving back into this aquatic nightmare to explore its legacy and why it remains one of the Saturn's most underrated gems. You thought you knew how to play the game? But no one has played this hard, this fast, this real, until now. Come, look into the world of Sega Saturn. Deep Fear was released at a crucial time for Sega. The Saturn was losing the 32-bit console war and the Dreamcast loomed on the horizon. With competition from Sony's Juggernaut and the upcoming Resident Evil 2, Deep Fear slipped under the radar. It never even saw an official release in North America. As one of the Saturn's swan songs, it holds a special place in gaming history, representing Sega's final attempts to keep up with trends in horror gaming. What made Deep Fear intriguing, both then and now, was its unique setting. While other survival horror games trapped players in haunted mansions or eerie towns, Deep Fear sank you deep into the ocean. The game takes place in a military research facility called the Big Table, situated at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. The claustrophobic underwater environment plays into primal fears. What if something goes wrong beneath the surface where help is miles above? Let's that sense of home. isolation is one of the game's greatest assets and continues to resonate with those who revisit it. He's hurt. Hey, you okay? At first glance, Deep Fear looks like a Resident Evil clone. It uses fixed camera angles, tank controls, and offers the same mix of puzzle solving, limited resources, and combat against grotesque mutants. There are a few elements that set it apart. The most significant innovation was the oxygen management system. In addition to the usual survivor horror concerns, 
players had to constantly monitor oxygen levels. Many areas of the big table become deprived of air, forcing you to use portable oxygen tanks. The twist adds a layer of tension that other games in the genre lacked, making every encounter and exploration fraught with urgency. However, this mechanic was also divisive. While it added suspense, it could feel tedious at times, breaking the pacing with constant stops to refill your air supply. Combat in Deep Fear was more action oriented than its peers. One of the game's more forward thinking features was the ability to reload weapons while moving, something that wouldn't become standard in the genre until much later on. The enemies, however, were a bit lackluster, with uninspired designs and predictable behaviour. Compared to the gruesome creations of Resident Evil or Silent Hill, the mutated crew members of Deep Fear often felt a bit too tame. For a game released on the Sega Saturn, Deep Fear was technically impressive. The pre-rendered backgrounds and underwater environments captured the foreboding atmosphere of being trapped below the surface, creating a tense and eerie mood throughout. The graphical limitations of the Saturn didn't detract from the overall experience, but character models could appear blocky and the animations were stiff, by today's standards anyway. While the visuals hold up as a product of their time, the sound design hasn't aged quite as well. On one hand, the soundtrack by Kenji Kawai, known for his work on anime like Ghost in the Shell, provided a haunting ambient backdrop that intensified the suspense. On the other hand, the voice acting is a notorious weak point. English dialogue is awkwardly delivered, with characters sounding wooden and disinterested. Chief! You don't have to yell, Mookie. I can hear you just fine. It's an emergency! Sharon's drowning in the e-pool! Come quickly! I'm right above you. I'll be right there. It's reminiscent of early Resident Evil voice acting, which is both charming and frustrating, depending on your tolerance for cheesy B-movie performances. Crash? What happened? We don't know yet. I asked Dubois, the designer, to come too. Oh! There's no problem with my CFOX system! No accident should have occurred! Oh! In retrospect, this voice work adds to the game's quirky charm, but it's undeniably a little bit rough around the edges. Terrible! My masterpiece is ruined! Oh, what am I gonna do? So why does Deep Fear remain in the shadow of other survival horror titans like Resident Evil? Part of the reason is its limited release. By 1998, the Saturn was definitely in its twilight years, and with the Dreamcast on the horizon, many gamers overlooked Deep Fear entirely. It never even saw a North American release, which further diminished its exposure and ensured that it never got the same attention as its contemporaries. In the years since, however, Deep Fear has developed a modest cult following among retro enthusiasts and Saturn collectors. It's one of those games that, while flawed, does enough to be remembered fondly by those who give it a chance. The underwater setting and oxygen management system were bold moves for the time, and it's a shame they didn't get a broader platform to shine. However, it's also worth noting that Deep Fear came out during a time when the genre was still defining itself. In the late 90s, players were only just beginning to appreciate the nuances of survival horror. As a result, Deep Fear may have been a little ahead of its time, overshadowed by the juggernauts that would define the genre. Looking back, Deep Fear is an important piece of Sega Saturn history, and a hidden gem of the survival horror genre. It took risks with its underwater setting, introduced new mechanics like oxygen management, and offered a different kind of terror. Though it's not without its flaws, tedious backtracking, repetitive enemies, and awkward voice acting, the game deserves recognition for its ambition and atmosphere. 
In many ways, Deep Fear is a reminder of Sega's experimental spirit during the Saturn era, where the company was willing to try new ideas, even if they didn't always land perfectly. For fans of retro gaming and survival horror, it's definitely a title worth revisiting, both as a curiosity and as a relic of a time when Sega was still fighting to stay relevant in the console wars. Shinkai Horror Suspense Deep Fear Sega Saturn